Hello everyone, this is everything that Christmas 2025 brought me. So this is kind of a far away shot here, um, but there's basically two sections that I have sectioned off purely because I ran out of room on this box over here. This cardboard box is actually not, was not for Christmas. This is, I'm just using to prop up these two things over here. But I'll be going through everything here, and all of this equipment is contributing towards a project I'm going to be doing where I'm going to be build, building my own voice evacuation system that will be going onto the board uh, to be used for a future system test that will eventually come out. All right, here we're moving to pile number one, and we're going to start off with this Velcro. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would you request Velcro for Christmas? That is ridiculous. I mean, it's so boring. Yes, I'm aware. But I prefer this to having to screw stuff into this box, and you'll see what I mean later. As some extra side notes, it holds up to 10 pounds, but I think there's some kind of asterisk about that it holds up to one pound per square inch. It is also considered industrial strength. And I got this because just to be safe, you know, I don't want it to be like too dingy of Velcro. And then it, it like, just cause the industrial strength can hold more weight, whereas the regular cannot. So I just want to be on the safe side. You know, if I ever want to mount any heavy stuff in here, I can just do that with this. It is also one roll of four foot by two inches, but you can cut it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And it is black. Moving on to the next thing up here, this Extron WPB 103. So this plate, uh, I honestly don't even know why I got this. I kind of just thought it was cool. I don't really know why I got this. It is actually just probably going to go on my board somewhere there or there, and it will be so I can pipe third-party audio outputs into the voice of act system so that basically I can take my phone's audio output and plug a cable from that into this input. This input will just go into the voice of act computer because there's going to be a computer that's going to run the whole thing. I have a spare laptop up there that you can see it there. Um, and there's a, a jack. It's not on this side of the computer. It's on the other side. But this will go... Um, out from the box into the jack on the laptop. And it'll just allow me to play audio from devices that are not the laptop itself. I will not be utilizing this VGA port down here. I have no use for that. This is kind of one of the more exciting things here. This is a Pile PCM20A. Um, it's an older variant of it because they sell a newer variant that has Bluetooth capability. But it is a commercial amplifier. Uh, it has both 70 volt and 25 volt output. I believe it is maximum 40 watts. It's got three inputs, but I'm only going to be using the aux. I have no use for mic one or mic two, and I have no idea what you would even plug into those. I'm assuming some sort of paging mic, but I do not own that. So on the back, you have a voltage switcher for different regional voltages. I have it set on 110 because I'm in the United States. And then here you have your terminals for speaker output. So you have common and 25 volt for 25 volt speaker, common and 70 volt for 70 volt speakers. And then you just have a regular 8 ohm uh, positive lead for like a, a bookshelf speaker or if you're using just regular hi-fi speakers that aren't commercial PA speakers. And then there's the AC input down there. You can also adjust the gain manually for each of these inputs and there are EQ controls on this. I didn't even actually notice that. <laughs> There's power switch, which is just expected and standard. The last thing on top of this container is this EST Genesis strobe. Yes, it is a strobe only. I totally disagree with the fact that they didn't change the chassis because like, why are there holes here if there's no horn inside? It is currently set to 15 candela. I have yet to open this thing up. Uh, it's only got two terminals. And it is a G1R-VM. It's an older strobe. Uh, you can tell because it does not have the fire lettering on the sides. 
and originally Genesis's did not have fire lettering on the sides. That was a later addition, as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I actually really like this. The only thing I don't like is how you have to open up the device to actually mount it and get the screws out of it. But I do like how small of a profile it has. It's just a very compact device. And I, I, I think they look quite nice, too. All right, last on this side is this box here. And it almost looks like a toolbox, but it's not a toolbox. It is a electrical cabinet. So there's some mounting hardware in here. Um, and there's some screws to uh, screw in this mounting plate here because you can screw stuff to this if you want. But as I said, I'll be using Velcro, so I'll be Velcroing stuff to this. It's technically weatherproof, but it's never going outside. And you could even put a lock through it if you wanted to. There's a, a connector you could put a lock through. But really, this box is what I'll be using to mount some equipment inside of. I will not be pulling out the equipment right now because it's in that shoebox. I don't know why I started talking like a southerner. And there's stuff on top of there, and I don't want to mess with that right now because we haven't even gotten there. I shouldn't even be showing you that yet. Ah. This box is made of plastic, um, which is fine for what I'm using it for. And I don't know that I really like these latches too much, but it is what it is, and it was cheap on Amazon. It is pretty sturdy, though, so I'm happy about that. Okay, so we're moving on to the second side here, and there are actually only two things, because this is just the power cord to the amplifier over here, and I'm going to break my Genesis. This is to go with the strobe. It's actually quite neat. It's a Genesis speaker-only unit. I'm not really sure the history of these devices very well. It is a 25 volt model. It is a G4HFRF-S2. It does have fire lettering. It does not have a strobe in it, but rather just some random red plastic in the molding. I do like how small this is. It's very tiny. I know the newer LED Genesis is Genesis is as this is as is have an even tinier speaker back, but this is still small nonetheless. It'll easily fit into the four by four boxes I have up there. And the Genesis strobe will fit nicely onto those plates I have there with those horns that you've never seen before because I never posted anything about them. But I will eventually. Don't worry. As I was saying about the history, I'm not really sure whether or not speaker strobes were initially made in the Genesis line or whether it was like first they came out with horns and strobes like this and then eventually they expanded to speakers because as far as I've seen all Genesis speakers have the fire lettering on them unless they're like specifically an alert speaker or just a, a regular mass notification speaker. I don't know that there's necessarily like an older variant like there is with this where it doesn't have fire markings on it. I think these guys tend to have big fire lettering here on the newer variants. Not really much of an EST expert. This over here is a like a, a board that you plug into your computer. And why do I need this? Well, I need it because in order for the computer to be the brains of this voice evacuation system, it's got to somehow communicate with the fire alarm panel, my ES50X over there. Um, if you're building an arcade cabinet and you have to mount buttons to it, you use something like this and usually connect it to, I don't know, maybe a Raspberry Pi if it's like retro arcade games and you have a, a, an emulator for certain arcade machines on the Raspberry Pi. You can use this to connect your controller hardware to that device. So um, these buttons are like A, B, X, Y. And in this box, they actually have the uh, hardware you use to mount them. Oh boy, that's probably not a great idea. I'll just take one out here. <laughs> so they're these little plugs. You plug this end into the board wherever the button you want is. There's a diagram of which plug is which button on online. And then these sides just have these uh, connector things that you can plug button leads into, or I guess technically I'll just shove wires into them. Basically what I'm going to do, 
if I can even get into here, is I'm going to go and take the alarm relay and just... I, I actually don't even remember which terminal block it is. I think it's one of them over there because those are three terminals, so that would make sense for a relay. And the alarm relay will essentially close the connection on one of these that's going to go into this board, which is going to plug it into the laptop. And then when it closes the connection, the laptop will register, oh, the A button was pressed. And then it'll be like, okay, well, the A button is currently being pressed. And so that means there's a fire. And then obviously when, if I set that to a silenceable alarm, um, then the A button will stop being pressed when I silence it. And then they'll be like, okay, well, the alarm is supposed to be silenced. So I'll silence it now. That logic will be executed through a custom program I'm writing for the computer. Uh, more on that in a separate video, likely. This is the cable it uses to connect to the computer because it's a USB type B connection to USB type A connection. All right, well, that was Christmas 2025 and the gifts I received relating to my voice evacuation setup project that I will be building very shortly. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment down below your thoughts on these GIFs and how you'd like these Genesis devices. And also just my idea of activating the voice evacuation with the computer. Like the video if you liked the video and dislike the video if you didn't like the video. And have a nice day.